Okay, simplifying fractions. I'm going to show you a few different ways to simplify fractions, uh, but no matter which way I show you, the first step is always the same. We are going to see if the smaller number goes into the larger number. So let's bring up a few scenarios where that is the case. Let's say I have the number 8 over 16. The smaller number is 8. Does 8 go into 16? Yes, it does. So that means I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 8. So divide top and bottom by 8. And what you're really doing is dividing by 1. Because 8 over 8 is 1. And to get an equivalent fraction, you divide by 1. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So 1 half is my simplified fraction. Let's look at a couple more. How about 5 twentieths? The smaller number is 5. Does 5 go into 20? Yes. So then I'm divide top and bottom by 5. Again, you're really dividing by 1. 5 over 5 is just a form of 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 20 divided by 5 is 4. So that is 1 fourth. And now the reason I say see if the smaller number goes into the larger number and not to see if the numerator goes into the denominator is because you can actually have an improper fraction that can be simplified. Let's say I have 36 over 6. Now the smaller number is on the bottom. But the fact remains the same. 6 does go into 36. So I divide top and bottom by 6. 6 over 6 again is 1. 36 divided by 6 is 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. And 6 over 1 is just a form of 6. Okay, so let's say we have the fraction 16 over 20. 16 over 20. So as we see, step one doesn't work. 16 is a smaller number, um, and it does not go into 20. So the next thing you, you can do is you can find the greatest common factor by listing all the multiples. This is the most common way of doing it. It uh, requires the most amount of work. It works every time if you do it correctly, of course, but um, it requires a lot of work. But let's go ahead and do that. So let's list the factors of 16. So I'm making a factor rainbow. So 1, yes, 1 goes into 16 because 1 goes into everything. 2 goes into 16 because 16 is even, so 2 times 8. Uh, 3 doesn't go, but 4 does, so 4 times 4. So my factors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now let me list my factors of 20. Does 1 go into 20? Yes, 1 goes into everything. 1 times 20. Does 2 go? Yes, 2 goes because 20 is even. 2 times 10. Does 3 go? No. 4? Yes, 4 times 5. And since I reached the 5, I know I'm done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to circle all my common factors. You just go to one of them and then just check it against the other. I'll go down to 20. Is there one here? Yes, there is. So I'll circle the ones. Is there a two in both? Yes. Is there a four in both? Yes. Is there a five in both? No. 10? No. 20? No. So my greatest common factor is four. My common factors are one, two, and four. But what I'm really looking for is my GCF. My greatest common factor is four. And that's the number you're going to use to simplify your 16 twentieths by. So let's go ahead and do that. So divide by 4 over 4. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. So my answer is 4 fifths. So that way we'll work every time. So why don't we do one more? Why don't you try it? Let's simplify the fraction uh, 12 over 18. This time I'll leave myself a little bit more room. 12 over 18. So why don't you pause the video, uh, make a factor rainbow for both, and find your GCF. Okay. So hopefully you did it. 12. So I'll put my 12 here. And does 1 go into 12? Yes, 1 goes into everything. 1 times 12. Does 2 go into 12? Yes, 2 is even. So I know, I'm sorry, 12 is even. So I know 2 goes into it. 2 times 6 is 12. Does 3 go into 12? Yes, 3 times 4. 
And now I've reached the other side, so I know I'm done listing those factors. So now let's do 18. Does 1 go into 18? Yes, 1 goes into everything. Does 2 go into 18? Yes, 18 is even, so I know it goes. 2 times 9. Does 3 go? Yes, 3 times 6. Does 4 go? No. Does 5 go? No. So I reached the other side, so I know I'm done. So now I'm going to find my common factors. So I'll just start up top here. There's a 1 down at the bottom. Yes, there is. So I'll circle 1. Uh, is there a 2 at the bottom? Yes, there is. So I'll circle 2. Is there a 3? Yes, I'll circle 3. Is there a 4? No. Is there a 6? Yes, so I'll circle 6. Is there a 12? No. So now I know I'm done. My common factors are 1, 2, 3, and 6. But the one I'm looking for really is my greatest common factor, which is the greatest one they have in common, which equals 6. So I'll take my 6 and divide my numerator and denominator by 6. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. 18 divided by 6 is 3. Is that what you ended up with? Good work. Okay, well, listing the factors is the most thorough way of doing it, but it requires the most amount of work, and it's been my experience that when you're adding and subtracting fractions and whatnot, that students don't go back and list all the factors and make a factor rainbow and do all the work. So what I'd like to give you is some, give you is some options and other ways of looking at the fractions and seeing if it can be simplified. Now, the advantage is it's quicker. The disadvantage is sometimes you'll find a common factor but you won't necessarily find the greatest common factor. So let's look at a few examples and we'll get into all that. So uh, step two, option two, use divisibility rules 10, 5, 3, or 2, or the eye test, and I'll get into that. So what you want to do is you want to use the divisibility rules that I taught you, and if you don't have them, they're in Canvas, or you could email me, or you could find them on the internet. So let's say I have the fraction 50 over 60. So what I did is I listed the visibility rules from greatest to smallest. So option two, use the visibility rules 10, 5, 3, and 2. So the 10 rule says if the number ends in a 0, then it's divisible by 10. So for simplifying fractions, they would both have to be true. So do both 50 and 60 end with 0? Yes, they do. So then I know that 10 is a common factor, and I'm going to hope it's the greatest common factor, so let's check it out. So I'm going to divide by 10 over 10 and you can see I've just a lot less work 50 divided by 10 you know you just take off a zero from both places equals 5 60 divided by 10 is 6 so 5 6 so now what I want to do is just make sure that that is a simplified fraction and nothing else can be done well I can tell you right away if there's a difference of 1 between the numerator and denominator there's nothing else you could do to it but in any event can 10 work no does it end in 5 no does a 3 will work no. And is, are they both even? No. So in this particular case, it worked, and my simplified fraction is 5 sixths. All right, let's do a few more using a couple of different rules and the I test. All right, let's say I have the fraction 25 over 35. So again, I could make the factor rainbow like I did before, or I can go to the rules. 10. No, they don't both end in 0. 5. So the 5 rule says if the numbers end in 0 or 5, then it's divisible by 5. So that's the case. They both end in 5. So let's divide the numerator and denominator by 5 and see what we ended up with. Divided by 5. Divided by 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 35 divided by 5 is 7. Um, none of the rules apply, so 5 sevenths is my answer. All right. Let's do a couple more. Let's do it where I have 25 over 40. All right, so we'll start at the 10 roll. Do they both end in zero? No, 40 does, but 25 does not, so it's not a common factor. Let's go to five. So the five rule says, does it end in zero or five? Well, 25 ends in five, and 40 ends with zero, so five is one that works. So divided by 5, divided by 5, 
and 25 divided by 5 is 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8. I'll check the rest of the rules. 5 eighths. Uh, that looks pretty simplified to me. So the answer is 5 eighths. All right, we're going to go through a couple of the other rules and then give you some to practice. How about 27 over 33? Does the 10 rule work? No, they don't both end in 0. Does the 5 rule work? No, they don't end in 5 or 0. Does the 3 rule work? Well, I hope you remember the 3 rule, but I'll tell it to you again. The 3 rule says if you add the digits for each one and they're divisible by 3, then the whole number is divisible by 3. So 2 plus 7 is 9, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So since 3 goes into 9 and 3 goes into 6, then the 3 rule works. So that means that 3 is a common factor. So it's divided by 3. Divided by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 33 divided by 3 is 11. So 9 11 uh, is a simplified answer. The 10, 5, 3, or 2 rule does not work. Okay, so now let's look at a couple other things. So let's say we have 28 over 32. Well, you might not know, the, know what works here and what doesn't. So let's check this out. Does the 10 work? No, it doesn't end in 0. Does the 5 work? Nope, because it doesn't end in 0 or 5. 3. 2 plus 8 is 10. 3 doesn't go into 10. So I don't need to check the other one. If it doesn't work on one, it doesn't matter for the other. Does the two rule work? Are those both even numbers? Yes, they are. This one ends in an eight. Eight is even. This one ends in a two. So I can divide both by two. Divided by two. Divided by two. Two into 28. If you don't know, you can always do side work. But I do know that it's 14. 32 divided by two. Again, you can do side work if you need to. And I have 14 sixteenths. So again, I want to check. Does the 10 rule work? No. Does 5? No. Does 3 work? 4 plus 1 is 5. No. 1 plus 6 is 7. No. How about 2? Yes, they're still even. So I can divide by 2 again. Fourteen divided by two equals seven. Sixteen divided by two equals eight. And now I have my final simplified answer, seven eighths. All right, so over here I put the word eye test. And what the eye test means just means to me is can you just look at it and see something? Now here we notice we had to simplify by two twice. Now given the eye test, do you see it without listing the uh, common factors or the factors, a number besides two that goes into both. Well, I, what I could have used in the first place was four. So let me just show you, and maybe this, you know, again, it doesn't matter if you pick it up the first time or not, but if you do see something greater than the rule, then you should use it. So 28 divided by four and 32 divided by four. So 28 divided by four is seven, 32 divided by four is eight. And what you're gonna see is these, it doesn't matter how you get there, but if you happen to see the greatest common factor, you should do it. All right, why don't we try a couple here? Uh, this one's from the sheet, 15 over 21. All right, so do your eye test or check your rules. All right, pause the video and try doing this one on your own. Okay. Let's see. 10 doesn't work because they don't both end in 0 or 5. One of them ends in 5, but the other one doesn't. 5 doesn't work uh, because it doesn't end in 0 or 5. I misspoke in the last one. They both would have ended with 0. 3 rule works. Well, let's check that one out. So 1 plus 5 is 6. 2 plus 1 is 3. If you didn't see it, now you should see it. Uh, 3 goes into 6 and 3 goes into 3. So then 3 is a common factor. So it's divided by 3, divided by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So 5 sevenths, nothing else is going to work. 
So five sevenths is the answer.